Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. All right, folks, in this episode, we're gonna go over a very commonly asked question when it comes to fishing. What's better, tying a knot or using a crimp? Before we get into this, though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay, folks, so like I said, we're here to answer the question. What's better, tying a knot or using a crimp? Personally, to me, this question is confusing. They're both good. Tying knots is great in certain applications. Using crimps is great in certain applications. Sometimes it's better to tie a knot than to use a crimp. Sometimes it's better to use a crimp than it is to use a knot. So that being said, I think the more appropriate question to answer is when is it better to tie a knot and when is it better to use a crimp? Knots and crimps are the two ways you attach your hardware and your terminal tackle. Both are super effective if done properly. If your knots are improperly tied, they're going to be abrasive and one, they're going to snap right at the head of the knot or two, they will come undone. The same thing with crimps. If a crimp is done improperly, it's either going to have a crotch break or it will snap because you have pinched your line. Okay, so let me explain this. The way it works is your line has a diameter. It's actually a circle if you look at it face down. The thicker pound test it gets, the more chunky and less pliable and more manageable a knot becomes to tie and really cinch down and make sure it won't come undone. There comes a certain point when you have to stop tying knots and actually go with crimps. The decision factor is up to you, but I'm gonna to explain to you what has worked for me over the years. All right, so when it comes to the lighter pound tests, that's when I'm always tying knots. Tying great knots that have been tested throughout time. Knots like the clinch knot, the palomar knot, and the uni knot. I use knots all the way up to 50 pound test. With the three knots I mentioned, I stop tying those knots at 40 pound test. When it comes to 50 pound test, I will only tie a double clinch knot. The double clinch knot for me has never failed on 50 pound test. It doesn't warp your line and it really provides a great connection point that is super resilient, shock absorbent, and it's non-abrasive. At 60 pound test monofilament, that is where I will start to use crimps. They make crimps for all size lines from there on up. They even make them smaller, but like I said, I feel more comfortable using knots with the lighter pound test. The smaller crimps almost get pinched all the way down and can actually cut through your line or do what is called a crotch break. A crotch break is where your crimp has crimped onto a loop and it breaks right in this point right here. So as your pound test fishing line increases and the diameter of it increases, like I said, it becomes less pliable, more unmanageable. You have to consider this with what knot you are tying and how you are tying it and how you're applying what tactic to what knot you are tying. For example, if you're using a clinch knot, you might do about seven wraps and send it back through with like 12 pound tests. The further up you go, let's say when you get to 40, you might wanna decrease those amount of wraps because you are gonna warp your line and compromise the integrity of your monofilament if you do seven wraps, you probably wanna downsize it to about five wraps and pull it tight. The same thing goes with crimps. As the diameter of the line grows bigger, the diameter of the crimp required will also grow. So you need to pay attention to what diameter of line or pound test you are using so that you can get the proper crimp. For example, this is my 150 pound test monofilament leader. It has a diameter of 1.3 millimeters. Now you can go on ahead and look at the pound test that is offered on the packaging for a crimp, but it's more important to remember about the diameter. Not all line is created the same. You might have 150 pound test liter that is 1.5 millimeters. So with my particular 150 pound monofilament liter, I go with a crimp that is rated for 1.3 millimeters. So having a matched crimp 
to your monofilament will prevent a crotch break or a snap off on the top side of it because you've pinched your leader. Another thing to pay attention to when it comes to crimping is you're going to want to use the right slot on your crimp tool when it comes to fastening the crimp to the leader. Otherwise, you can over tighten it and pinch it and all of a sudden you've compromised your leader. So on the head of your crimp tool, there are number gauges that tell you what slot size is usable for what crimp you are using. It comes in number ranges, not specific numbers, so you find the appropriate range that is for your crimp and you put it in there and you'll give it a good squeeze. Now when you set a crimp, you wanna to try to go in the middle of the crimp. That way it's flared out a little bit on both ends and not pinching your leader. Crimping can be done wrong very easily and you've compromised your leader. Now, another piece of advice when it comes to crimping, crotch breaks and pinched off leaders can be avoided by using what is called chafe gear, also known as chafe tubing. It's just a little plastic sleeve that goes over your leader and you feed it through your crimp and then you crimp down on it. This cuts down on the metal on metal heat and friction that compromises your monofilament. Typically, you'll wanna use these when going after bigger game fish. The last thing you want is to lose a prized fish at the boat because of a compromised crimp connection. So that about sums up that question. What's better, knots or crimps? They're both good. But we've answered the question, when should you use a knot versus when should you use a crimp? And it all comes down to what line are you using? What pound test are you using? How big is the diameter of your line? Can you realistically tie a knot that will cinch down or do you need to start crimping it? And we went over a little bit about being careful tying knots and crimping to make sure that you don't lose that fish right at the boat. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned about the difference of when it comes to making a choice of whether it is time to tie a knot or whether it's time to crimp that line. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.